In launching the web browser, let's enter the IP address of our Ethernet I.O. module. As the page appears, we will note port 1 with a solid green LED. As we look further at the port information, we'll see that this port is now operational and active for an I.O. link configuration. All corresponding ports below it are still configured as digital inputs. With I.O. link, the true value we gain is the ability to navigate down to the device level. By clicking on ports, we could select the port that we want to drill down further into, in our case, channel 1. On this screen, you see a lot of good information. One is, we have in the field here noted all the service data associated to that IO-Link sensor connected to channel 1. In the fields here, noted as input and output data, or process data, those are represented. Finally, we also have a little bit of a status as far as our IO-Link connection and our digital input. As the sensor gets blocked, we observe the on-off status change. In addition, we're seeing our process data toggle on and off as well. Note the input data as 1 here and 0. After observing the process data location in the integrated web server, I wanted to show where the process data for the connected sensor can be monitored in the PLC. Let's proceed by opening up our input array. And in our input array, we note that the input data is being represented from bytes 14 to 17. Now, as we place something in front of our sensor, we will note changes occurring in that first byte. So again, what we were able to observe in the integrated web server is also possible to be observed in the PLC. Thanks for watching the video on integrating a Pepperell and Fuchs IO Link Master into RS Logics 5000. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and drop any comments or questions you may have. Thanks again.